Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Risk of Rain. Most of you uh, at this point are probably familiar with Risk of Rain. It's a game that I've covered many a time before, uh, earlier in 2013 when it came into a uh, like an alpha or even a pre-alpha form. Uh, it's gotten a lot of people's radar because it's a really cool kind of mix of action platformer plus roguelike, but it's not really a roguelike because I know people get really anal about that, but it's got roguelite elements, we could say, uh, and kind of reminds me of like a platformy style Binding of Isaac game, if that makes any sense. Contrary to what you might think by looking at the title, it is not a game where you play a cloud and, I don't know, try to rain on people's parades. We're gonna get started here. This is the Steam release of Risk of Rain. It's finally come out in its final version. This is not Steam Early Access. This is it! It's available on Steam for 10 bucks. You can find the link in the video description below. Let's start single player here. Um, and the, I should probably start this by saying I'm really bad at Risk of Rain. Like, staggeringly not good. Uh, I have only unlocked zero characters. I'm, I've still got a, the only the existing commander. Despite putting probably 10 hours into this game over the course of various builds, including the final one, which I have about two hours in, uh, I, I can't unlock anybody else. I'm too bad. But I've seen people that are substantially better at this game than me, so uh, hopefully you'll be able to unlock some of these classes and get some of the enjoyment out of it. I mean, I played as some of these when we did the NLSS. Like, I played as Weird Up, or Weird Chained Up uh, Monkey Man over here. They have differential skills. Hopefully we'll unlock one over the course of this, but anyway. Um, basically, you can almost think of the character selection, if you're, if you're not familiar with Risk of Rain at all, kind of like a MOBA or, you know, an action uh, RTS kind of style hero selection. Basically, every uh, possible character that you pick has four abilities. These are mapped to the Z, X, C, and V key, or the Z, X, C, V keys, if you are, I guess, not from part of the former colonial British Empire. In any case, let's get started. And I will go over the abilities that we have here, but first I got the mouse pointer off the screen. So this is entirely controlled via the keyboard. There is also gamepad support if you are interested, but come on, using gamepads for a PC game? That's something nobody would do. Okay, I only use gamepads for three kinds of games on the PC, and it's definitive. I will accept no argument here. I use gamepads for real-time strategy games, hyper-competitive multiplayer online first-person shooters. That's just a given. Like, if you're not playing Counter-Strike with a DualShock 3, you, you obviously don't know what you're talking about. And uh, dating sims. That's just because I like playing them, and I will accept no criticism on that. Anyway. Um, so we're moving around with the arrow keys and then ZXCV are our ability keys here, each one of which has a cooldown. So, um, the cooldown on this is like infinitesimal or zero. Um, that's just our standard kind of attack that you can see here and we can, uh, see the enemy's health bar as we hit them. Uh, we also have a shotgun blast which also serves to knock enemies back a little bit. Oh good, I found the teleporter right off the bat. Maybe good, maybe bad, I should say. Uh, so that's our like basic bread and butter kind of kind of attack. Uh, we also have a dodge roll, which you might have just seen right there. And our V is actually, uh, I think it's called FMJ, Full Metal Jacket, which allows us to uh, fire a number of shots in quick succession uh, in all directions around us that we choose, or all directions that we have kind of enemy aggro. So, um, what's kind of cool about Risk of Rain, you know, yes, you kill enemies, you get experience, you get gold, you use that gold to buy items. Uh, but kind of the gimmick of the game, if I'm going to, you know, reduce it down to a gimmick, is that uh, clock up there on the very top, come on. Oh, the jellyfish are the worst because they don't get affected by knockback. Um, yeah, is the clock up there in the top right. So what's interesting about this is that, you know, most roguelike-ish games get more difficult as you play, but it's not really formally stated. Just enemies get tougher um, and you end up, uh, you know, facing harder bosses, etc., etc. That is all true in this as well. But also, the longer you spend on uh, the game in general, the more difficult it gets just in terms of, like, the number of enemies that spawn and the difficulty of the enemies that spawn as well. So it's a game where, you know, it starts out on this difficulty very easy and then, of course, that will change as we get moving along here. So what is our goal in Risk of Rain uh, on each individual level here? Well, our goal is to actually activate that teleporter that you might have seen. That teleports us to the next level uh, and allows us to progress throughout the game. I'm, I'm assuming there's an end point at some point, but I have not even gotten anywhere near that. So we're picking up golden experience here. Let's just get out of the way. Um, after we summon that, or activate that teleporter, it'll summon the kind of big bad of the level, along with a number of uh, enemy waves that we are going to have to deal with before we can move along. So first things first, that's going to be a challenge. So I want to get some items first, because the items are really the crux of the uh, the game and the experience here. Um, there's uh, over a hundred, or at least a hundred items, according to the store page. Uh, I've seen a couple duplicated, but um, those glasses are new to me. Um, so, yeah, the, the the fun of it is really like the synergy in between the items that you got. So I picked up, I, I'm gonna guess that that's some kind of like, I don't know, crowbar or vial of health at the bottom, and what that does is give me permanent uh, HP growth every time I kill an enemy, which is extremely useful. Um, and I don't know what these glasses are, we'll pick them up in a second after I take care of uh, Jellyfish and Fireman here. Not that, I, not that this is, uh, you know, Mega Man or anything like that. Alright, what do our glasses do? Chance to do double damage, that seems absolutely awesome. 
Uh, I will say there are active and passive items. I've seen an awful lot of items that have uh, health effects, and I think that's maybe a byproduct of the game. Uh, not really having that many variables at its disposal. Basically, you got health and damage. I've seen one item that allowed me to do like elemental damage, so I, I had like a lightning damage modifier that allowed me to hit multiple enemies occasionally. Um, and that, that was really useful and that was really cool, but the vast majority of items that I've seen so far, at least passive items that I've seen so far, have either been something that boosts your damage, boosts your critical chance, etc, etc, or something that either allows you to get more consumable hearts or, um, well, it's not either. More, more health or more permanent HP capacity, if that makes sense. Like, it raises your max HP, or it just allows you to pick up more HP every time you kill an enemy. An example of, uh, one of those would be, like, you know, th there's this item called, I, I think it's a cube of meat, almost. It's, it's an analog to that, basically. Um, and every time you kill an enemy, they drop chunks of meat, and the meat actually heals you a little bit. So, uh, we've leveled up, we've gotten a, a decent chunk of money here. Let's try to take on our first boss. So we have 90 seconds of enemy spawns to deal with, and also uh, a boss, which you can see right there. Now, this is not the most difficult boss. Um, there, I think there's two bosses in the um, in on, on each level here, and this is uh, the easier of the two, I think. The other one, they, they're all like uh, modifications of... Uh, some of the random mobs that you just find. Uh, so this one is like a modification of the jellyfish mob, of course. Uh, whereas the other one is kind of a modification of those big, like, stone giant type creatures you see. So, because we got those health modifiers, uh, it should be fairly easy for me to just farm up, uh, relatively bad enemies or weak enemies. Uh, and then get enough HP to survive. But it, it is tricky, like, the boss fights... I oftentimes find myself, like, the only time I ever succeed on the boss fights is if I'm scumming the game up a little bit. So if I'm, like, I don't know, just hiding in a corner and, like, enemies can't get to me for whatever reason, then I can just focus on the boss. Maybe scumming is not the right word, but, um, you know, very rarely can you afford to get into a, uh, like, a straight-up fist fight with these bosses, uh, especially with the number of enemies around them. So, oh, this is not good. We are fairly close to the, um, enemies stopping spawning. We do have to kill all the enemies still in order to succeed, but um, at the very least, maybe I can just run through here for a second. And there are some items that I can pick up over here, uh, or potential items at least, that I can pick up over here that might be useful. Shocks nearby enemies, that actually seems like it might be a goddamn lifesaver here, but I may actually die as well. My average uh, lifespan in Risk of Rain probably clocks in... Oh, I'm not dead. I'm very, very nearly dead. Uh, my average lifespan in Risk of Rain probably clocks in somewhere at like the seven to eight minute mark, which is crazy because I've seen people, uh, you know, oh, I got fucking killed. I've seen people put up like 60 to 90 minute, uh, videos of this, which is absolutely goddamn insane to me. So I'm dead. Um, I got a new record in terms of points, I guess. That's amazing. Let's try this again. Uh, I should point out, by the way, it might, it, it, appearances can be deceiving to a certain extent here. These are not, uh, I believe we had, actually had the developer confirm it, that these are not actually, uh, like randomized or procedurally generated levels. These are, um, you know, totally like scripted level design, which is fine. It allows them to kind of, you know, put things in, in placements that uh, they know work. Like they're not going to accidentally put an item behind a wall or something like that. Uh, and the, the levels are vast enough that it doesn't really matter. Like th this is not like an Isaac style dungeon crawler where like having randomized levels would really affect, like positively affect the enjoyment, I think, uh, of the experience. That being said, you know, I guess it would be something that uh, some people are probably going to complain about, but. Uh, Truth be told, I, I have very positive impressions of Risk of Rain. This is, A, exclusively a single player, um, but for anybody who is into roguelike-ish games, I think this is something that would definitely uh, be up your alley. And what I really like, and it, you know, it's maybe a little bit unprofessional to talk about stuff that is not necessarily related to the game itself in the course of the video, but I really like that, that like, the developers seem to have a really good head on their shoulders. Like, the game kind of blew up in, in publicity a little earlier this year, and, oh, chance to fear enemies when attacked. I've never actually... Uh, God and that, so we'll see what that does. I'll, I'll talk about the fact that I have an active item in a second as well. Um, but it blew up, and it didn't seem like they got really a, a big head about it, at least in my personal experience. Like, they ran a, a Kickstarter. They probably could have run a Kickstarter for substantially more uh, than they chose to, but they ran a Kickstarter for a very modest $7,000, and the whole time they're just like, yeah, you know, we're not going to, like, let feature creep happen. We're just going to make our game, and... This is how much money we need to make it, and, you know, they, they asked for, I believe, like, $7,000, and then they got it, of course, because that's a very a Kickstarter campaign you can feel pretty good about. Um, and, and now the game's out, and it came out basically on schedule, and uh, it's exactly what it was promised, basically. So, if you're the kind of person who, you know, watched Risk of Rain coverage earlier, and you're like, oh, this looks cool, but I'll wait for, uh, you know, when it's actually out, 
Put your money where your mouth is, uh, it's out. And, you know, it plays basically the same as it's always played. There have been minor, well, not even minor improvements, like major improvements, just from, like, a sound design standpoint. Uh, the first thing I noticed when I booted this up and started playing is, like, it's down, it sounds a lot more satisfying uh, now that, like, I, I don't know how recently this was added, but, like, enemies actually have death noises, and when they get hit, they've got, like, their own kind of crunchy sound. Before, it was just kind of, like, sometimes it could get a little monoton monotonous, and it was guilty of that to some extent, because you would just, like, consistently be firing, and just, like, all you'd hear in the background is rat -a -ta 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 -ta, like, over and over and over. Um, but now they've got their own kind of, like, squishy hit sounds and hit markers and, and death sounds as well, which is kind of nice. Um, and, of course, you know, the, the multiplayer has been added as well, which is in the beta build, but for people who are not familiar with the beta, multiplayer has been added. It's not the smoothest multiplayer experience, it's one of those ones, kind of like Terraria, where you'll have to do, um, like, direct IP connection, and I had to do port forwarding to get it to work for me, but it's fine. It works. It's a little bit cumbersome, but it works. So we have a choice between three items here. This is almost like a Spelunky shop or something. Um, I'm gonna get the, uh, banner. The war banner, I think it's called. Yeah. So this is an item I've had a couple times before. And what this does is every time I level up, which you will see here, uh, it creates kind of an area of effect. And when I stand within that area of effect, uh, I get uh, some bonuses. Like, you, you might be able to notice. It might be hard to tell if you're not actually, you know, holding the keys yourself. Um, but I got, like, a huge attack speed bonus uh, when I was inside of that. It might actually apply when you're outside of that as well. I'm not totally sure. Eh, it's hard to tell. Anyway, basically, this gives us passive bonuses whenever we level up, which is cool. Uh, so I also mentioned we have this, uh, active item here, so th these things can chase me down, let me just take care of him first. Uh, all the enemies, uh, at least on level 1, and that's all I'm really qualified to talk about, unfortunately, have different properties, and effectively it's, you know, health, damage, attack type, and how they're affected by knockback. The Lemurians, which is like the standard kind of like purple bird-like man you see me fighting all the time, uh, they are affected by knockback on like every attack, which makes them actually exceptionally easy to deal with. Whereas these flame dudes are only affected by knockback on uh, my shotgun blast and my FMJ, which is basically like my, my V here. Um, so, that, you know, it does change the strategy for how you deal with things. What's this? Retaliate on taking heavy damage. Cool. Uh, so, let's talk about this active item. So, I have this active item here. This is kind of a, you know, not to say it's not useful, but this is kind of a boring example of an active item. I believe that this just heals me uh, whenever I wanted to. So, I'm at 254 health right now. Let's use it with the G key. Now, I'm at 270 health, and those have a, a much longer active cooldown. Uh, sorry, I should say the actives have a much longer cooldown. Um, what was I going to, I thought there was something else that I was going to say. Oh, well, I guess I was just going to highlight other possible active items. Like, I've gotten an active item that is like a missile swarm that fires just a... Like a bunch of cluster bombs, basically, when you use it, and that's really useful. Um, no, I mean, not to say, again, that this, uh, the one that I just got isn't useful, because it, it will probably save my life at least once, but still. Um, maybe not the most bombastic of all of them. So, this time, uh, l let's actually try to make it past the first level, so you can see how things get difficult, uh, or more difficult in the second level. I really thought, at some point, I would be good at Risk of Rain. Uh, unfortunately, it's just not happening. I don't know if this game just, like doesn't fit into my brain or something like that, but seriously, like, I've seen Josh play it. Josh is really good at it. Um, for whatever reason, I've seen people tweet me, and they're like, how are you so bad? I got a 75-minute run on, like, my third try. There's the meat nugget, as you can see. I told you it was pretty analogous to Cube of Meat. <laughs> meat nugget. Pretty sim uh, pretty similar. Okay, so here's our boss uh, portal. It's a little scary, because this is a very, uh, obviously, like, kind of tight area down here. Uh, it's very nice to have this HP upgrade that I could possibly use, though. So I really want to get the war banner as soon as possible, which we'll get whenever we level up. And, uh, this time- Oh, actually, there are three bosses we could fight here. Okay. I saw the Magma Worm, uh, once when I fought, uh, or when I was on the second level. I didn't know that it could spawn again, uh, this early in the game. So this scares the shit out of me, as you can probably guess. I am losing, uh, a stupid amount of health already. We need to get out of here. Please tell me you can't double back and hit me. Uh, it got pretty close. Okay, let's just put ourselves up here. It's actually not necessarily a terrible idea. Uh, to run away for a while, at least that's in my experience so far. And one thing I will say, I think one of the reasons I'm not so good at Risk of Rain, uh, is because I, I do struggle with, like, the, the strategy that's smart to use, if that makes sense. So, like, in Isaac, I know how to beat a floor, I know the order you're supposed to take, you know, if you're having trouble, uh, get your items and then go fight the boss to give you the maximum chance of, of success. Uh, whereas in this, I never know if I'm supposed to, or if it's, like, the best idea to farm enemies, or if it's the best idea to just bum rush the boss as soon as possible so that the difficulty modifier is not super high. Oh my god, I almost died there. Uh, that healed me for a reasonably high degree. And again, we'll just keep running. Remember, the enemies will stop respawning pretty soon, so... Um, if I can just get, like, one more war banner boost... Let's see what we get here. Oh, we got another item. Okay, hurt enemies by falling on them. I've never 
uh, used that before. I've seen it, but I've never actually had the opportunity to use it myself. So we'll see how that works out for me. I think I may still make it through this. Um, compared to uh, a lot of other roguelike-ish games, uh, I definitely feel like... Oh, this guy's still alive, of course. Uh, I definitely feel like Risk of Rain... Uh, it, it's more harrowing. It, it's got like more of a kind of feast or famine style to it than, uh, say, Spelunky, for example. Uh, Spelunky, maybe not the best example. This this does have more of an Isaac feel to it. Um, but you know, an Isaac, generally speaking, and this is you know, definitely not a fair comparison because it's coming from someone who has like 500 hours in that. Uh, I spend most of my time in that game being reasonably. Uh, high on health and then eventually I become uncomfortable and the, the run ends when I encounter some difficult enemies. Um, but it seems like relatively linear, it's like an up and a down if that makes sense. Uh, whereas in Risk of Rain, I seem to be uh, spending an awful lot of my time like going down to nearly zero health and then healing up to nearly full health and then going down to nearly zero health. Uh, and I think this is part of um, part of the way that the items work in the game, or partly because of the way that the items work in the game. That was a terrible use of Full Metal Jacket there. I have no idea. There was like a little worm that popped out of the ground. I wonder if that was a secret or if I just missed something. Um, basically what I'm getting at is that uh, there's a lot more swings in terms of your HP, which is very scary to deal with, but also uh, makes the game very exciting as well. So, uh, I am presumably going to live here. I'll use my foreign fruit one more time again! <laughs> Obviously the foreign fruit is not useless. Uh, it has uh, made it possible and conceivable for me to actually win here. So we got another uh, kind of healing item. Uh, healing. Oh god! I unlocked someone. Excellent. Uh, by beating all three bosses, I finally unlocked a, a new class, which I guess is what that uh, spaceship thing is there. So we can now leave and go to the next level as soon as I kill all of the uh, remaining creatures here. Uh, but let's just get some more items if possible. Oh, we got it unlocked. Pass a shrine four times in a row. Okay. Press Q to switch items. Maybe we want to switch foreign fruit. Repair all drones. Uh, that's useless for us right now. Drones are kind of like familiars that'll follow us around and uh, and heal us up. I'm very happy that at the very least I discovered one new uh, class. I, I may or may not do a run with that class. I guess it depends how long uh, this run goes on for. If this goes on for 60 minutes, we will probably just stick with uh, <laughs> like this as the final run here. And I don't think you know, it's it's probably a major selling point that there's multiple classes in the game. Um, but I don't think you necessarily need to see them in order to understand. Uh, that this is a game where variety is definitely the spice of life, and every run is substantially different just simply as a result of um, the, the sheer variety of items you get. I, I've seen items multiple times, as I've mentioned, but I have never had a run that was like effectively borderline the same uh, as a result of picking up items that are too similar, if that makes sense. The one complaint I do have about the items is that a lot of them um, just kind of seem like palette swap versions of like, okay, this gives you health, this gives you health, or this gives you extra damage, this gives you an extra critical chance, etc, etc. Uh, but it's a relatively minor complaint uh, in the whole scheme of things. Uh, and, you know, all roguelikes are guilty of that to a certain extent. The only one I can think of off the top of my head that's not is like, well, okay, Splunky and Nuclear Throne. Um, but that's because Nuclear Throne, you know, doesn't have 100 items, it has like 20. So, you know, I guess at some point it's like artificial variety to say like we have a hundred items in our game but a lot of them are just different ways to get HP um, but it does it makes a difference even if it is only you know mentally in your head there, there, there's a lot of variety in the game let's just put it that way I'm, I'm talking myself out of uh, my enjoyment so far which is silly because you know, the only thing that matters is how much fun I actually have when I'm playing it okay we have defeated the level um, we can now go to the next level what really sucks is that you don't actually keep your uh, items. So if I want, or sorry, not you, you keep your items. Obviously, that would be really stupid if you didn't. Uh, but you don't keep your money. So I should spend some of this 424 uh, dollars that I have uh, to pick up some new items. So here, attack faster at lower health. Uh, we can summon some imps, I believe, is what this is. And these are like, you know, it's a mechanic that's been in games like Diablo and stuff like that, where if you kill the imps, uh, you get treasure. Uh, but it's going to be very difficult to kill all five of them, considering they're just going to fall from the sky like immediately. So. Um, we may just leave for the purposes of this video and head straight down uh, to the next level and I can show you at least how enemies get more and more difficult as time goes on. So we'll get a little bit of experience for leaving and uh, this is good because we'll get ready to level up. And this is actually the first time I've been in the Sky Meadow. Every other time I've been in kind of like a mushroom infested cave. Um, but this is fine. Uh, let, let's find some new enemies and probably die pretty quickly. All right, never mind. I actually have been here, and these uh, vaginal giants, the shadow of the clitoris, is uh, staggeringly difficult to deal with. I'm very lucky that they're affected by knockback. One thing I would like to point out, by the way, is that I, I've harped a little bit on um, 
oh, you know, like, there's just superficial differences between some of the items. Although I stand by this, I, I was just thinking, and like, there are other effects that I've seen that have come up a lot. Freezing effects, you can freeze enemies, uh, or have a chance to freeze enemies with your shots. Uh, the lightning effect that I previously mentioned, I'm sure there's more, again, I... You know, truth be told, I've not invested a ton of time into the game so far. Two hours uh, for a, a roguelite is not always uh, enough to get a real feel for how things are going here. As you can see, I'm getting like outclassed by these enemies pretty uh, heavily and may die soon. The, the ramp up in difficulty, uh, not only from a time standpoint, but also like in terms of going down to the next level, is extraordinary. Um, there was one more I wanted to mention. Oh yeah, there was an item I picked up that was like Happy Mask, and the way that it worked. Uh, when we get here, extra experience. Uh, the way that Happy Mask worked is that um, whenever I killed an enemy, it summoned a ghost of that enemy, and that ghost was was friendly. Uh, so, oh come on, seriously? There we. Go. That ghost was friendly, so um, it actually uh, hurt other enemies that came within its range. So that was a really uh, kind of a neat. Uh, item. I wish there were more of those kinds of items, but I understand the limitations behind uh, there not always being that opportunity. Like, I, I can't deal with these Colossus motherfuckers here. Okay, we, should we fight the boss straight away? I think we should... Oh, again, I've lost all my money, so I can't buy these items. Um, I know that the piggy bank just gives us more gold gain. I have no idea what the crowbar does. It seems like it would probably be more uh, immediately useful than just more gold gain, though. I'll just stand here and tank these jellyfish. Yeah, getting the war banner is pretty useful, and maybe I'll get enough money to buy an item here. Um, so I'll probably buy the crowbar here. I'm pretty sure the question mark is just, you know, a random item. One complaint I do have is that you can't shoot, uh, at least with this character, uh, you can't shoot on uh, ropes or vines, which is annoying because, you know, you want to just kind of hang out here and shoot, but maybe that would break the balance of the game or something. Something that takes a little while to get used to anyway. So we'll just climb down here. Uh, there is a shrine, I think that is, for 76 gold. Basically the way shrines work is... Uh, Kind of like a curse room or something like that in the Binding of Isaac. You, you spend a little bit of money and maybe, or it's a judgment more like. Uh, you spend a little bit of money and maybe you have the opportunity uh, to get an item. But sometimes you have to invest, you know, two or three times in order to get it. There are also your demon shrines where you invest health, inste health instead of, uh, of money. So, you know, it, a lot of this stuff is taken wholesale from Isaac, and I mean that in the, the best way possible. This is a game that is very much, you know, if, if Sushi Castle was a ripoff of Isaac, um, Risk of Rain is just heavily inspired, and it kind of uses it to, uh, you know, to its, make its own flavor, which is kind of cool. So, let's just go over our items quickly, because I'm probably going to die here uh, as I fight this boss. We actually have a, a passive, or actually, it's not passive, it's an active... Uh, Regen and the way that this is working is that uh, every time I hit an enemy I, I replenish a little bit of my health So that actually makes it fairly feasible for me to stand up here and tank these guys Especially when you uh, keep in mind that I also have the ability to um, Heal myself with my uh, my active effect that being said these are some pretty difficult enemies that I'm dealing with here So I I'm a little bit concerned, but if we can beat this boss and then kill all the other enemies that would be awesome Okay, let's pick up the crowbar. Um, I, I did not pick it up, but I at least bought it uh, and I got a it's a weird situation. I've got to hit these enemies to continue healing up, or otherwise I'm going to die. Uh, deal bonus damage to healthy monsters. That's the crowbar. Okay, so I've used the... Oh, okay, I'm still alive here. Uh, I just used the, the fruit to keep myself alive, and hopefully we'll be able to regen enough health to, to live a little bit longer here, because I have a lot of things I, I still want to accomplish in this world. Uh, let's just shoot again. Okay, things get seriously hectic. Like, if, if you're a fan of the more hectic uh, roguelites, Nuclear Throne is actually a pretty good example. Uh, I've been killed. God damn it. Uh, this will be right up your alley. So, I, I died. Uh, that was a 15 minute run, which is pretty good. But let's um, go back to the main menu, and I just want to see what this hunter's abilities are. I think I played as him once. So, he has, uh, in comparison to, like, the auto attack, basically. Oh, Full Metal Jacket was the shotgun. Sorry, Suppressive Fire was the, uh, like, the V option. Um, the Enforcer. Sorry, I thought I unlocked the Hunter, but the Enforcer, okay. So he's got a shotgun that does 160% damage, a shield slam, which knock, does knock back and hurts enemies as well. Take a defensive stance, blocking all damage from the front, increases attack speed but renders you immobile, and crowd control. Launch a stun grenade, that seems cool. Stunning enemies in a huge radius for 250% damage, and it can bounce at shallow angles. Neat! Um, what's kind of cool about this, uh, in the single player game mode, yeah, it, it, it changes things drastically, but uh, Josh and Nick and I had a lot of fun on the NLSS, uh, mixing and matching the various classes. And I, I believe, you know, think of things like protect and serve. Um, you could maybe have like an enforcer at the front and then have two guys at the back who can uh, do damage through the enforcer and uh, he can just kind of serve as the shield bearer, which is neat. So I'm not going to play the multiplayer over the course of uh, the game here. I will go back to the main menu and uh, you can see that it exists here. So there, there's local co-op, of course, but there's also online co-op as well. Again, the online co-op doesn't have like a lobby system, which is kind of annoying. You have to correct, uh, connect directly via IP. It's a relatively minor complaint, but I think it's a, a worthwhile complaint regardless. But um, this is a risk of rain. 
It's 10 bucks available on Steam. If you've liked what you've seen of this game uh, in the past, I encourage you to pick it up now that it's available. Ran a really modest Kickstarter coming out at a, a price that I think is totally fair uh, and a game that I think uh, a lot of people will spend uh, an awful lot of time with. Keep in mind, this is a, a difficult roguelike platformer. I mean, roguelite platformer, whatever. You guys, had, hopefully at this point, know what I mean. Um, is it my favorite roguelite of the year? Probably not. It's got some heavy competition. That being said, uh, I could see myself investing uh, a lot more time in this just to reach some level of proficiency because I'm doing absolutely terribly at it so far. I've never made it past the second level, but at least we unlocked a new class here. Uh, as always, there will be a link in the video description to pick up Risk of Rain on the Steam Store page. I would encourage you to do so if you are interested. It, it's a really remarkable story that this game kind of came out of nowhere and uh, now is out and as good as it actually is. Uh, additionally, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to show your support by clicking the like button, and of course, subscribe if you want to see more first impressions in the future. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you next time.